Welcome to video 22 in our van build series. Today we're going to install our cedar ceiling. Home Depot had a minor sale on one half inch tongue and groove cedar. So this time I figured rather than making dimensional lumber from the rough cut cedar we had on hand, like I did in our porch project, I would save myself a ton of time and buy pre-made. I watched a half dozen videos on this topic prior to starting. Lots of good tips and I encourage you to do the same. However, there are some pitfalls to avoid. Well, I made my own mistakes, which cost me time and a little money, and I'll share those with you so you don't make the same mistakes. Lastly, I'm going to share with you the most important step that you can't skip. This step may make the difference between a handyman special and a professional installation. Let's get started. I figured sanding all of the boards clamped tightly together would be a far more efficient way of proceeding. And it was. This saved me a lot of time, first with 120 grid to improve imperfections in the wood, and then 320. However, I should have separated the pieces after I was done sanding, and I didn't. This was a costly mistake. I chose bare, water-based polyurethane floor finish. It never occurred to me that by not separating the boards in an attempt to save me time, it would cost me additional time. And of course, the polyurethane acted as a binding agent adhering the boards to each other. So not only did it take me more effort to separate the boards without damaging them, I damaged about 5%, breaking off their tongues making the boards unusable without some creativity. Here I am after the first coat of polyurethane, trying to separate the boards. I carefully cut along the seam at a depth of about one-eighth of an inch to make the separation possible. I then very carefully continue to move the wood back and forth to get them to release. Here are all of the broken tongue pieces. About 5% of the boards were damaged. Dumb mistake. Not a good start to this project. The second and third coats were applied one board at a time. When finished, it was a nice looking product. Setting the cedar aside for a moment, I needed to start on the furring strips. For this, I used 5 8 fur plywood that I had left over from the van's flooring project that I completed about five months ago. I planned on four inch wide furring strips, wide enough to not only nail and glue to, but to also provide a much needed clamping surface to hold material in place when you're working above your head. I will be using rivet nuts and PL construction adhesive to bond the plywood to the van's ribs. Hopefully you can hear me over the furnace. Um, this has been a little bit fiddly. I, I started by finding the center of this board and drilling a small pilot hole, and also finding the center of the metal rib behind it and drilling a hole. And I essentially aligned those two up. Uh, in doing so, prior to placing the board up, I looked for areas where I knew I would be able to drill another hole and not hit the edge of a hole or the edge of a relief or something like that. So what I did is I started with a longer bolt uh, because of the spring. This board would have been about here, so I had to have a fair bit of reach in order to start tucking this up. And then with this tightened right up, uh, I was then able to make sure the board was uh, straight this way. Uh, and then using the pilot holes that I drilled at these two locations, I followed through to uh, drill through the metal. I'll do the same right now because I've got I'm ready for the next two right here. Now that I have those marked, and by the way, I couldn't have them marked until this was tightened right up because the board moves in a little bit. So these two are in. I'm sorry, these three are in. Uh, I've got those ones marked. I will now undo these and uh, 
uh, put in the rivet nut into the metal on, on both of these, drill these up to final size. And prior to assembling the entire thing, I will cut a small relief in the back side of the plywood here, just to make sure I'm not putting any undue pressure on these two wires as they're going across, because they actually don't go through the metal, they're just on top of it, so I'll cut a relief inside the plywood. This is a wire relief channel. With the location of the rivet nut set, the pieces tested to fit, I used a 7 8 wood bit to countersink the M8 bolts, so the ceiling remains flat for the cedar. Having first dry fit the piece, I'm now adding PL construction adhesive to make it permanent. Here is a close-up of a rivet nut being installed. The three main ribs all worked exactly the same. However, the front and the back of the van require a different approach. Here we are holding some cedar in place and marking the back wall to see how thick or deep our back rib needs to be. Now I need to remove about an inch or an inch and a half of insulation to make room for the rib. Here I'm cutting one of a handful of small indentations that are needed to make up the rear rib. With the rib pressed into place using a floor jack, we are once again testing to ensure we have the height right by holding up a piece of cedar. With the floor jack holding the rib in place, I'm now using a pre-drilled pilot hole so I can drill through the rear rib to mount a few M8 rivet nuts. Oh, I don't have any leverage this way. No. Oh, <laughs> I'm hurting tomorrow. Okay. Once again, PL construction adhesive and rivet nuts to attach the rear rib. Moving on to the transition area between the cargo area and the cab, I will be placing an entirely new rib here, and PL construction adhesive will be the only bonding agent. I will be adhering the rib directly to the metal roof of the van. Floor and shelf supports will be used to provide sufficient pressure to ensure a strong bond. Since there are no M8 bolts used here, I left this for a full 48 hours before I removed the supports. I'm up near the roof of the, uh, the van and I have uh, one of our cedar boards uh, it's temporarily clamped in place. You can see I've got some needle nose pliers down there and here just to stick uh, down to the ground. The area of interest here is this piece right at the front. This is the transition area between, um, I'm gonna call the cargo area and the area above the cab. And uh, yesterday I installed this, uh, this piece here, which was about one and a quarter inches by one inch. Uh, it's just, um, what is it, it's cedar and uh, I used PL construction adhesive to stick it right to the roof to essentially build another beam. Um, by clamping this piece in place, uh, I can now see the amount of drop that's happening here. Uh, you can, there's probably a little bit of uh, drop due to gravity, but you can see that this here is a little bit too high. Get the camera right up there. and. Uh, I could tighten it right up and uh, spring it into position, but that would look a little bit odd uh, as it is higher on this side. I want to get it as level as possible. So I have a tape measure here and I'm going to pop that into place. And if you look, I think we got about half an inch. So I could put a little bit of Baltic birch along this beam, half inch Baltic birch. I think I might do that but I'm going to first run it through the thickness planer to bring it down to 7 sixteenths. I'm gonna take a sixteenth of an inch off of that and that will, just drop the tape measure, that will allow this just to snug up a little bit. So I'm gonna, uh, all the way along this beam now, I'm gonna put some one half inch Baltic birch and I'll thin it down to 7 sixteenths. Perfect.
Okay, I've got the four little pieces up, increasing the uh, the thickness of the cross beam or the rib by seven sixteenths of an inch. And uh, I'll just do a check here now. Let's take a look. That is looking really good. So the last thing that I made in preparation of tomorrow's work is some uh, half inch finger clamps. And uh, I will be working by myself and I need some way of holding up uh, the cedar. So this half inch clamp will just simply slip above the board like this. And this is five eighths board up here and it leaves me exactly half an inch. So when I'm working by myself tomorrow, I'll be able to slide the cedar into position like this and uh, have this uh, holding the cedar in place at one end and another one in the middle or the center, wherever, wherever I need it. it. could be the front, the back, whatever. But I've got two of these made uh, to help hold the cedar in place while I tap it into its final position and uh, start putting in the brad nails. So we're ready for tomorrow. Well, I have the first six boards snapped into location. The, uh, the boards are advertised as being uh, <clears throat> five inch. Uh, they aren't. They are 123 millimeters. And the tongue is an additional six millimeters. So this is where the board is gonna reside, but I'll be making another mark six millimeters out just like this from each of these lines because the only thing that's going to be visible again the tongue sticks out six millimeters so now that i know where the boards are going to be i can start by cutting this one down to size the first board has to end up with the tongue six millimeters uh this side of this line and so i'll start a little bit fiddly on the first one getting it set up and uh, once the first one is done uh, assuming I nail uh, every one of these lines, the rest will fall into place. And you'll see here, this is the uh, center. Let's just go over here. It's better uh, shown here. <clears throat> the center is right here. And uh, the first board starts 61.5 millimeters from center. And that will allow a center board to be right down the middle of the van. And then I repeat on this side. So I start with that first board. And I'm going to do that right now. We're drilling holes for our six pot lights. Okay, all six lights are connected for the first time. Good. Okay, they're all looking good. Uh, it's on dim and we're drawing 0.61 watts. Let's go to full brightness. And we're drawing 12 watts on full brightness. This is awesome. Here I'm taking the bow out of some less than straight tongue and groove cedar. This became very frequent. It wasn't necessary for every seam on every rib, but I bet I did it more than half the time. For some reason it was very rewarding to install the fan shroud. It really finishes the area. Off camera, I used a table saw to cut it down to the correct depth. Here I'm just getting started on the second set of three pot lights. Here's a close up of how they snap into place. If you're interested in these pot lights, there's a link in the description below. Well, end of day two, and I have the uh, ceiling about 99% done. Uh, ceiling fans in, all six lights are in. 
I haven't mounted uh, this one yet as I've been doing some minor repair to the cedar. Um, we had a couple edges right there that weren't quite level, so I re-sanded them down after they were installed and reapplied uh, polyurethane. So other than that, this is done. I have uh, one and a half pieces left right down the side there, and I'd bet money that's going to take me half a day, just that one, one side. Uh, but this is looking fantastic. On this last strip, right against the passenger side wall, I spent a great deal of time making a cardboard template that fit exactly. Here I am transferring the wall curvature to a piece of cardboard. Then it was just a series of trials and tweaks until I was happy with the fit. And finally, I transferred the cardboard to the cedar. Incidentally, when cutting cedar with a jake saw, you want to do it face down as the blade cuts on the upstroke. This will ensure you have a nice clean edge. I used a single brad to hold it in place until the PL construction adhesive sets. All of the brads installed so far have been hidden within the grooves. This final row of cedar will be the exception. So I'm working on the uh, last piece of the ceiling in the van. I'm starting in the, uh, in the corner because that's the most difficult part. And I made this little piece, which I now know fits. You'll notice I've had to cut off the, uh, the back end. And then I've transferred that to the actual piece, which is going to go into the van, uh, including the, the 45 degree uh, cut down the entire length. has to go above the sliding door mechanism into the ballpark and then up into the groove something like that all right i'm gonna hold it Well, this wraps up our cedar ceiling project, and I'm pretty tickled in how it turned out. I think uh, one of the most valuable uh, lessons learned and perhaps advice I could give is snap lines on the ceiling. I wanted this center piece to be completely center, and it turned out it, it was. And uh, I was successful with that by uh, not taking the wood at face value with respect to it being five inches. As I mentioned earlier, it is not. So I found out how much it was and I snapped all of those lines. And uh, if you don't have the lines snapped, uh, while you're putting the boards up, you don't know whether you need to make this one particularly tight and that end a little bit loose or vice versa. Uh, you need to have that reference as you're going. And by having that reference, it enables you to make the minute adjustments that are needed for, uh, well, for wood. There's an awful lot of uh, imperfections uh, in wood. And the other piece I could share is I did spend a lot of time um, uh, tightening seams. And uh, just to make sure that, I'll get my shadow out of the way, just to make sure that I adhered uh, to... Um, getting the lumber lined up with the lines. Uh, for example, you know, if I'm out, let's say I'm right here and it's it's crossing the line a little bit, well, it means that this piece right here is going to be that much more across the line and it just amplifies until you get to this center point, this center piece here, and it's no longer in the center. So snap lines, it'll help you in the long run. It takes a little bit longer up front, but uh, you end up with... Uh, nice and straight lumber and uh, you're doing the best you can with the imperfections that there are with wood. So I'm pretty pleased.